Hello students of class 10. So, hope you are doing well. Today we are going to discuss with another topic of your bio book. The chapter is life process and the topic is digestive system. Digestive system in human being. Human beings are heterotrophic in nature. Heterotrophic means they depend upon other organisms for their food. They get their nutrition from other organisms like plants and animals. They are not able to synthesize their own food. Human beings are omnivorous in nature. Omnivorous means they feed upon both plants as well as animals. They are omnivorous in nature. Human beings are, the nutrition in human being is horozoic. Which we have holozoic, that is engulfing of food. Engulfing of food take place. That type of nutrition is known as holozoic nutrition. Digestive system in human being consists of alimentary canal and digestive glands. Alimentary canal and digestive glands. Alimentary canal basically that is 9 meter in length. And let's start from here. Mouth and ending with anus. What are the main parts of the alimentary canal? Mouth. Then buccal cavity. Then esophagus. Then small intestine, stomach. Then small intestine. Large intestine. Rectum and anus. All these are the parts of alimentary canal. Alimentary canal consists of all these parts. Plus digestive glands. Digestive glands are salivary glands which are present in mouth. Pancreas and liver. Liver is the largest gland present inside the human body. Liver is the largest gland present inside the human body. This question is asked uh, many times, name the largest gland present in the human body. So that is liver. Okay, now we are going to discuss each and every part of the alimentary canal is mouth. Mouth is the opening of the alimentary canal which leads to the buccal cavity. Buccal cavity has two parts, basically tongue and teeth. Tongue is a muscular structure. The tongue is muscular in nature which helps in mixing of food with the saliva. Mixing of food with saliva which makes the food dissolved form and helps in swallowing of food. Swallowing of food towards the esophagus. It helps in speech. We can speak out because we have tongue. It helps in speech. Teeth, the hard structure which are meant for cutting, chewing and crushing of food that is known as teeth. And teeth are partially embedded in the socket of jaw. They are partially embedded in the socket of jaw. That condition is known as thicodon. That condition is known as thicodon. Four types of teeth are present in human being. Four types of teeth are present in human being. And that condition is known as heterodon. Heterodon. Two types of, two stages, in two stages of life, teeth are present. Two types of teeth are present. One is milk teeth and other is permanent teeth. That condition is known as diphyodon. That condition is known as diphyodon. So next is heterodon. We have learned here four types of teeth are there. Number one, incisor. Canine. Premolar. It helps in cutting of food. Canine. Canine help in tearing of food. Molar and premolar helps in crushing of food. The four types of teeth are present and this condition is known as heterodont. Okay. 
the digestion itself starts in mouth. Bo both type of digestion, chemical as well as physical digestion, both type of digestion take place inside the mouth. Chemical and physical digestion as we see uh, uh, now, physical digestion is churning of food, that is crushing of food with the help of teeth. That is known as physical digestion. And what do we mean by chemical digestion? Chemical digestion is the mouth contains saliva. Slivery glands are present inside the mouth. And slivery glands have the presence of an enzyme which is known as slivery amylase. What is the function of slivery amylase? It helps in breakdown of starch into sugar. This is the chemical digestion. Starch is break down into sugar with the help of slivery amylase. It gets started inside the mouth only. So digestion starts from mouth itself. Two types of digestion take place in mouth. Physical in which crushing of food taking place with the help of teeth. And then chemical in which slivery glands produces an enzyme which is known as slivery amylase and it break down the starch into sugar. This is the important question which has been asked many times. What is the function of slivery amylase? So what is the function of slivery amylase? It helps in breaking down of starch into sugar. This is the function of slivery amylase. Then, then uh, from mouth to buccal cavity the, push, uh, the food pushes towards the esophagus. Esophagus is a tube bladder structure which helps in lining buccal cavity with stomach. It is the main, uh, it is muscular in nature. It is muscular in nature and the, uh, the ball present inside the esophagus, the inner ball, helps in contraction and relaxation. It's doing contract and relax and then pushing the food towards the stomach. And that type of movement are known as pelvic pelvic movement. The pushing of the food by contraction and expansion by the inner wall of the esophagus. The pushing of the food towards the stomach by contraction and relaxation uh, of the inner wall of esophagus. That movement is known as parasitic movement. This is very important. It is being asked lots of times uh, in your board exam. Parasitic movement are shown in esophagus, the inner muscular wall. Contract and relax and helps in pushing down the food towards the stomach. Now, stomach. Stomach is J shaped organ which is present on the left side of abdomen. It is present in left side of abdomen. The ball, inner ball of the stomach helps in releasing the gastric juice and gastric juice contains three main things. The inner part of the stomach helps in releasing gastric juice and the gastric juice contains three main things. Hydrochloric acid, axial, toxin, and mucus. Hydrochloric acid helps in making the environment of stomach acidic so that this toxin activates and converts the protein into peptones, which helps in breakdown of protein into peptones. So, acid is essential to create the acidic environment inside the stomach so that this toxin enzyme can activate and helps in breaking down of protein. And what about this mucus? It helps in preventing the inner lining of stomach from this acidic effect because acidic acid is, has its own effect now. It can irritate the wall, inner wall of the stomach so it can be prevented by the mucus. The mucus helps in preventing the inner wall of stomach from the acidic behavior of axial. This is, these are the things which are present in the stomach. Here digestion takes place, partial digestion takes place, protein breakdowns by the help of pepsin into peptones. 
and uh, partially digested food uh, which passes to the small intestine that is known as bolus. What is small intestine? Small intestine is a highly coiled structure. It is the longest part of the human canal. The length is varied. The length of intestine is varied. This question has been asked for many times. The length of intestine is varied and it depends upon the food habit. The carnivores, which do, uh, does not feed upon the plants, they have very small intestine. Small, small intestine. Short, small intestine. And the herbivores, which eats upon the plants only, and the plants in which cellulose is present. For the complete digestion of cellulose, the intestine is very long inside the herbivores. Herbivores has very long small intestine, while carnivores has short small intestine because of their food habit. In herbivores, cellulose has to be digested and it has to be digested. It is taking time to digest the cellulose and the enzymes work upon it. And uh, herbivores have long small intestine while carnivores have short small intestine. It is highly coiled in nature. And small intestine will say the secretion of two digestive glands, liver and pancreas. The liver and the pancreas are the two digestive glands will release their secretion into the small intestine. Liver release by liver release by which is yellowish green in color and it performs two main functions. It makes the food alkaline in nature. The food coming from stomach is acidic in nature because of the presence of LCL. So what is the function of bile? The bile juice is released by liver into the small intestine. This is small intestine and it makes the food which is coming from the stomach alkaline. It removes the acidic nature of food. And second, emulsification of fat. Emulsification of fat means the breaking down of the large fat globules into the smaller one. The breaking down of fat, digestion of fat taking place here with the help of bile juice. These two functions are which performed by the bile. <coughs> and further, the bile is stored in gall bladder. It is released by liver, stored in gall bladder. And whenever we require that, it comes into the intestine for the digestion of fat. Emulsification. Digestion of fat is known as emulsification. The large fat molecules divided into the small globules. That is emulsification of fat. Next is pancreas. Pancreas release pancreatic juice in which three types of enzymes are present. Pancreatic lipase. Pancreatic amylase and trypsin. Pancreatic lipase, <coughs> sorry, pancreatic lipase is fat digestive enzyme. It helps in breakdown of fat. The fat which is getting emulsified further more breakdown with the help of this pancreatic lipase into much smaller molecules. Okay, then this pancreatic amylase, it helps in breaking down of uh, sugar into the starch, carbohydrate into the starch. And this trypsin, it helps in breaking down of protein and peptones into peptides. With the function of trypsin, it helps in breakdown of protein and peptone into peptides. These are the enzymes which are present in pancreatic juice, which is released inside the intestine during digestion. Most of the digestion takes place in the small intestine. Most of the digestion taking place in the small intestine. Absorption of food, because food gets smaller and smaller, breaking down into the small and soluble molecules, it gets absorbed into the, <coughs> the small intestine.
intestine, excuse me, it gets absorbed into the small intestine because small intestine has the presence of thinner light projection. The inner wall of intestine has the presence of finger light projection which are known as villi. This kind of small intestine which is highly quiet and the inner wall is this and it has the presence of small finger light projection which are known as villi. See, if you are doing like this or if you are doing like this, which has more covered area, this covers the more area. So, villi provides the more absorption area, the more surface area for absorption of food. This is the function of villi, finger like projection present on the inner wall of the intestine. It helps in more absorption of food, it provides more area for the absorption of food, villi. <coughs> So, uh, villi are associated with the blood cells and the food gets absorbed into the blood cell through intestinal wall. Through intestinal wall, food gets absorbed into the blood cell. Absorption of food takes place where? In the small intestine. Then, the food goes into the large intestine. Most of the water gets absorbed here and the food gets converted into the fecal matter. Most of the water absorption taking place inside the large intestine. Water absorption taking place. It is known as large intestine because it is wider than the small intestine. That is why it is known as large intestine. It is wider than the small intestine. That is why it is known as large intestine. Most of the water absorption takes place here. Then food passes undigested food. The undigested leftover food is passes towards the rectum. Here it stores temporarily and then to the anus from where it throws away from the body with the help of ejection or we know it. We call it as excretion.